Audi has just unveiled its new A6. Audi's new naming convention means that anything with an even number is electric. Anything with an odd number is now an internal combustion engine car. So I already did a video on the A5, which used to be a coupe, but now is in a state or a saloon because the A5 is an internal combustion engine car. This A6 is an electric car and it's a reasonable size electric car. It's like Audi A70 size, but that's an internal. Oh, it's all confusing. Anyway, let's get on with it and find out everything we need to know about this car. Okay, so Audi has released a video with designers talking about the car. So let's find out about it. Oh, dramatic music. My name is Sasha Heide. I'm a team lead for the exterior design. Right, they're showing off the new Audi logo. I don't like the new logo, what they've done with it. This is not a good start. Come on. And today, I'm going to present to you the all new Audi. That looks like a concept that I saw back in 2021. I think it was in Shanghai. Hmm. Sportback e-tron and the all new Audi A6 Avant e-tron. So that's the estate version. The other car was kind of like an A7, I said. Hmm. Looks quite chunky. Basically, the whole design of the A6 is a very big revolutionary step. We're asking ourselves, does it have to look? Do you know what? That front <laughs> sort of looks a little bit like a Hyundai Kona. I like it more than the Hyundai Kona, but yeah, there's a lot of black going on. Then it's got like this floating grille, which isn't a grill because it's electric, doesn't need it. And it's got very, very thin headlights. Now, normally what the convention is, is that you have the top part of the headlight isn't a headlight, it's daytime running light. And below it, yeah, you can see it is the actual headlight unit. A trend that was started actually ages ago by Citroen with their C4 Picasso. How it gonna change the overall volume, the overall appearance, the overall layout of the whole package. That got a little bit trippy there. Oh, I don't know what's going on. It looks quite chunky, really. Maybe a bit too chunky, a bit bulbous. I think the current A7 looks better. But then I thought the previous generation A7 looked better than the current one as well. So it's like the A7 design is going downhill, though it's not an A7 now, it's an A6 because it's a oh. uh. Anyway, carry on. Big wheels though. It's immediately speaking electric. You see our so-called inverted face. And the cool thing is that we actually oh, look at hide that. some light. Audi knows how to do lights, and I'm lighting the light signature here and the graphics, like with the animation of the lights. It looks cool. It's in these masks. Actually, dead head on, it's looking better. It's looking a bit better dead head on. And this gave us the opportunity to create the slimmer headlights we ever had done so far. Hey, mate, 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 they're not headlights. I've just explained they are not headlights. They're your daytime running lights. They are. The headlight is below. Coming to the side, the car is like really well proportioned. I don't agree. I think from the side it looks too bulky. We play around with volumes. We have a bold body and we have... Yeah, there is a lot of volume there. Super nicely modelled, sculptured, almost monolithic looking quattro shoulders. So the power on all four wheels is like really differently interpreted. And the main key elements I would definitely describe for the Sportback, this nice roof silhouette, which ends up in a very elegant spoiler tail. Right, spoiler tail. If you want to see a proper spoiler tail, look at the original A7. That is a beautiful spoiler tail. This one is not as nice. Okay, here we have the estate. The roof line in combination with the very fast forward slope. Okay, I'm looking down the side of the car. It's got those door handles, which aren't handles. They'll just be electric releases. They're quite nice though and you don't have poppy out your handles which is fine but i think i prefer the design of the current a6 avant this looks a little bit fussy with that c pillar and all like the design elements going on over the top and these two features we took over into the a6 e-tron to give it the appropriate right from the get-go i can just say based on these images i'm seeing now i prefer the look of the estate the estate does look better than that coupe saloon whatever they want to call it unique avant character yeah, I like the rear light design actually, and the fact that the rear Audi badge is illuminated. That is cool. Quite like the alloy wheel designs as well while I'm at it. Coming to the rear, there's a lot of things which are very aerodynamically driven. So for instance, the rear spoiler is very elegant, sporty looking. We have functional diffuser, which- That's functional. Really important for the low track coefficient. Apparently that diffuser's functional. I'd like to find out exactly how functional it is, but maybe it is. I thought a diffuser had to be really quite far underneath the car for it to have an effect, but I reckon it's minimal <laughs> in terms of the effect of it, just so they can say that. Even extend the range, and then it's- He says it extends the range, so 
Yeah, maybe I'll shut up. Aligned in its width by its super wide light bar, which is actually able to configurate like 3D light signature graphics. Yeah, I like the graphics over the rear light bar. That looks cool. Everything what we actually wanted, we were able to achieve. So thanks a lot to the package and the engineers. And this is fun for us designers to just translate this into a real model. Definitely 100% much prefer the estate. Let me know what you think in the comments. Estate or saloon, coupe, whatever it is. I'm going for estate. Anyway, that's enough about the design. So yeah, I'm not like mad about it i think it's okay some interesting design elements but be interesting to see in the flesh now though let me give you the full lowdown on this car and everything else you need to know about it one of the main reasons this car looks the way it does is to make it aerodynamically efficient because essentially what you want with an electric car is as little drag as possible so you can maximize your range and the drag coefficient on this car is 0.21 cd it's good apparently best for any audi not quite as good as a tesla model s but the best car for drag or the one with the low cd is the mercedes eqs the only thing is with that car it's not worth it because it just looks hideous that's audi now showing us that the vents at the front aren't fake and look ah ah ha 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 and that is the effect of using the cameras for door mirrors instead of standard door mirrors because it reduces the drag i bet that figure of 0.21 cd is for if you have the car configured with those camera door mirrors yeah, they are looking very small and sleek. So apparently they're a bit different on the normal e-tron. And look, they fold in and out. So less of a risk of people knocking them off when you're parked. And you don't want that to happen because they're a lot more expensive to replace than a normal mirror, I would imagine. Oh, look at this as well. They've actually moved the location of the screen. On the normal e-tron, it's like down here somewhere. And so you're like looking in the wrong place. At least now you'd be looking in the right place. I still wouldn't want these mirrors because you just don't get a depth of field in a digital display like you do when looking in a mirror. So... Yeah, I wouldn't bother with improvement in aero just for that. No, and you have to pay extra for them, no doubt. Yeah, I'll stick with the normal mirrors. Right, let's have a look at the inside of the car. So we've got this huge curved digital driver's display, which blends into the main infotainment screen. I thought it was all one screen at first, but I can actually see a gap between them. So it's one like unit, but there's two separate displays. Then it looks like there's a third display that you can get for the passenger so they can watch movies. Now this will have that kind of technology where the driver won't be able to see it. So it'll like, it'll just be blank from the driver's point of view. But the main screen looks very high def and it appears to be running Google. So Audi's version of Google, which is good. You'll obviously be able to have Android Auto as well and Apple CarPlay if you'd rather run your Apple phone through it, which I think Apple uses probably will. There is one thing I'm noticing here though, no physical climate control buttons. It's all gonna be operated through the screen. Boo. Now you can obviously control the climate using voice commands though, I don't tend to ever do that. And apparently this Audi is fitted with ChatGPT as well, so you can ask it random questions from the internet. Now they're showing the blind here on the car. So you've got a sunroof and it's got one of those like digitally installed blinds. So it just blanks out part of the roof in sections. Something I've seen on a Renault before. Now the advantage of this system is that you don't have a blind which actually eats into headspace. So it should make sure that the headspace in the back of the car is acceptable. But I'll obviously find that out when I review it. And to make sure you don't miss out on that, ensure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That's enough about the interior. Let's move on to performance. Okay, so here we've got some information on the motors. So you can get a single motor rear wheel drive with 286 horsepower. That'll do 0 to 62 miles an hour in six seconds. Then there's the performance version, which has a single motor rear wheel drive with 367 horsepower. That does 0 to 62 in 5.4 seconds. Then there's the Quattro. So it's got dual motors, one on each axle. That has 428 horsepower. And that'll do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. We've also got some comparisons to the BMW iDrive E40 and the Mercedes EQE 350 Plus, the Mercedes EQE 500 and the Porsche Taycan. And the Audi is there or thereabouts with its competitors, maybe erring on the slightly quicker side. Oh, look, it appears that there's also a sportier S version with some exterior upgrades and it has more powerful dual motors. So here, the S6 e-tron has 503 horsepower, though that'll actually increase to 551 horsepower when you're in launch control. That means it can do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds. But it is slower than its key competitors because now when we look at the high performance BMW i5 M60 X drive, that has 601 horsepower, 0 to 62, 3.8 seconds. The Mercedes AMG EQE 53, that has 625 horsepower and 0 to 62 in 3.5 seconds. And then the Porsche Taycan 4S, which has 544 horsepower 
car and 0 to 62 in 3.7 seconds. So the performance version of the Audi is slower than the performance versions of the BMW, Mercedes and Porsche. That's enough about performance. Let's find out a little bit about the range. So the A6 e-tron Sportback comes with a 94.9 kilowatt hour battery pack and Audi says the highest range version will be able to get up to 466 miles on a full charge. Now that is actually quite a bit better than the BMW i5 eDrive 40. It has an 81.2 kilowatt hour battery pack which gives a range of about 357 miles. So the Audi is way ahead of that. It's ahead of the Mercedes EQE 350 Plus as well. That car has a 96 kilowatt hour battery pack and a claimed range of 429 miles and the Porsche Taycan Turbo has a 97 kilowatt hour battery pack with a range of up to 394 miles. Well done Audi, though the numbers quoted for the Audi are for the lowest power version. When it comes to charging the Audi A6 e-tron can charge at a rate of 270 kilowatts, so you can go from 10% to 80% full in 21 minutes. The BMW i5 will do charging at 205 kilowatts and it will take about 30 minutes to fill up the same. The Mercedes EQE can only do 170 kilowatts and that takes 32 minutes to charge to 80%. The Porsche Taycan, the rear wheel drive version, has 270 kilowatt charging and that will charge in 18 minutes, whereas the Taycan Turbo with a 97 kilowatt hour battery pack can charge at 320 kilowatts. That means you can charge it to 80% also in 18 minutes. The Porsches are slightly quicker than the Audi, though the Audi is better than the BMW and the Mercedes. But where are you going to keep your charging cables? Well, thankfully, this Audi A6 comes with a front boot with a capacity of 27 litres and it looks like you can open it using gesture controls so you don't even have to touch it. I think Porsche did that with Macan already though. Speaking of which, the Porsche Taycan actually has a bigger front boot as well than this Audi. It's 84 litres, but at least the Audi has a front boot. What about the actual rear boots then? So the Audi is pretty good here. It's got a 502 litre boot, whereas the BMW i5 has a 490 litre boot. It's 430 litres on the Mercedes and just 366 litres capacity on the Taycan. So big win for Audi in terms of boot capacity. All right, and what about the prices? Well, the new A6 e-tron will go on sale in September, and for the Sportback, it's going to set you back from £69,000, whereas the estate version, the Avant, will cost from £70,000. Now, that's probably the one that I would spend my money on. Now, when you compare the pricing to the BMW i5 and i5 Touring, it's pretty similar, really. The BMW is slightly less expensive, but not by a big enough margin for it to matter. The Mercedes EQE is a similar price as well. The only competitor that really is considerably more, as you'd expect, is the Porsche Taycan. Now, Audi will actually release a less expensive version of the A6 e-tron later down the line because they'll introduce a smaller battery pack, which will make the car more affordable. Though I've no idea, as of yet, how much that one will cost from. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to watch some other videos, click on the windows. And if you want to sell your car the easy way, click on the CarWow logo and have dealers all across the country bid on it. Thanks for watching.